Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to do a disassembly on this Cybergun AK. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do consider liking, commenting and subscribing because those interactions help me get seen by the YouTube algorithms and that helps the channel grow. If you do want to support the channel a little bit more, click the join button down below. Channel memberships are open. They are just 99 pence a month or whatever the equivalent is in your country. And for that, you get some custom videos, custom giveaways, private chat area uh, in my Discord as well. Uh, totally optional, massively appreciated if you did want to support the channel a little bit more. Uh, and then last but not least, not least, there is a uh, link tree link down below that takes you to all of my socials and my Discord, which if you haven't joined, please do come and so do so because it's a great little community on there. Uh, a lot of helpful, helpful people. So we've got the Cybergun AK then. So we're going to do a disassembly. So if you do need to maintain it in any way, shape or form, you will know what and how to do that. So obviously make sure the magazine out and we're going to start by taking off the top cover and getting rid of that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at removing this stock from here. So I'm going to use a size three hex bit to remove these two beefy bolts. That's one. That's two and that slides off. So that is just a nylon block like that. And inside there, we've just got whatever the hell this is. Now that's quite reassuring that that is a lump of metal in there. So it's not just plastic on its own. I'm quite happy with that. So put that to one side, I'll we'll come back to that later. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna split this from the back um, via taking this off first, because that's gonna be helpful to us. So I'm going to get my little Phillips head and I'm going to remove this little Phillips head here. Like that. And I'm going to release that bar. Just pushed it forward out of that button and out of the way. And that will allow me to pull back slightly and then lift up and away on that assembly. And that just comes away easy as that. So there we've got the wiring. There's a fuse underneath there, which I didn't realise in the unboxing. There is our wiring, so we know that that feeds back under there. Now, when you take that uh, top assembly off, there is a little spring there. Just keep your eye on that because it probably will disappear at some point or you'll find it somewhere and go, where the hell has that come from? Now, that does seem to be stuck in there, so that's quite reassuring at the minute. Uh, what we're going to do next, there's the button off the top of the gearbox. That just freely comes off, which is quite handy. The old TM ones, they used to uh, have to remember to put them back in as you assembled the gearbox. So the next bit we're going to do is take out these four screws in here to lift the uh, front end out. When you are removing these, they are two, or in most cases, they are two different lengths of screws. So I'll take the front ones out first. So keep them together so you know where things have come from. There we go. Now on this occasion, They are actually identical in this uh, particular gun, but often you will find that there are two different lengths of screw in there. So make sure that you keep them together so you know where they've come from. That one's just uh, refusing to cooperate. There we go. Just helped it out. So at this point now, those four are out there and I should be able to just, I'll explain that in a minute, pull that forward and out. Now, just like the CM028, there are four little washers. There we go. Make sure you catch them. So they just come out of these locations here. They're all identical washers. So it doesn't matter where they go back. Just make sure that you remember where they go. And then we're going to release these two screws to get the uh, hop and barrel out to look at. So just slide that out. Pretty long barrel as AKs tend to have. Now, 
looks unusual. The hop rubber is actually, I don't know if you can see that or not, is actually um, like a split type, which is unusual uh, considering it's a JG. Other than that, it, it totally is a JG. Uh, so you've got a black plastic um, hop unit, AK style hop unit, if that does need replacing. And you've got a standard brass barrel, which is relatively clean down there. It definitely could do with a further clean, but it's not horrific by any stretch of the imagination. So I'll put that back in and uh, we'll uh, remember to put those screws back in when we're reassembling. So next then, we're nearly ready to get the gearbox out, or we're nearly at the point to get the gearbox out. Now this is a little cover on here. So all we're gonna do here is just get the, if you find a little gap under one corner, there we go, look, there's a the gap. I'm just gonna pry that up. There we go, and it just clicks out like that. And it's just a little click on cover. I'm then gonna undo the Phillips head screw in here. And drop that down. And then there is a little tooth washer in there. Get rid of that. There's the selector. And then we've got our little cam. Let's see if we can get hold of that. There is our cam. So don't forget when our cam goes in, it's got a little notch in the top. The notch goes down into there like that. And it connects up with the little uh, notch that's in there. And then last but not least, we're just going to remove this screw in here. And that releases pistol grip. So we've got a little bit disappointed to see that the wires are soldered onto the motor terminals. Not an awful lot I can do about that at the minute. Uh, make sure as you're lifting it out, you keep a hold of these because these will just ping off and slide out. So there we've got our polymer body. To be fair, it's pretty solid. It looks more solid than a uh, standard CM028 uh, receiver. There we've got our gearbox. So I'm just going to, at the minute, that's set to safe. So all of these teeth here should marry up discuss it when we're reassembling and then that should sit in the way and that's your physical safety there flip it over there's your select plate and these teeth here should all marry up exactly like that so i'm going to lift these out of the way put them down and i'm going to lower the camera down now and we're going to have a look at this gearbox so now here we are with the gearbox we are going to get started so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use a flat head and i'm going to put that in there and just push that black plate over this notch in here. And then I should be able to grab it at the front. It's still quite firm. There we go, sliding off and it's sliding off. Easy enough. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little tiny flat head and just get this uh, part out here. Make sure you put this on because this obviously keeps crap out of the gearbox and stops the uh, set to gear chewing through anything that might go near it. And then I'm going to remove uh, this part of the selector system covered in what I hope is a thread lock. Not a very good thread lock because that just broke quite easily. Now when you, we'll, we'll discuss that going back together shortly, put those together. Then I'm going to remove the motor. Now, it might be that these screws are different lengths, so make sure that you know which screw came from which location. So those two screws, pretty much, there's about a millimeter. The back screw was ever so slightly longer. Uh, so I will remember that to reassemble. So I'm just going to lift those out of the way. Ideally, those motors, this, connections would have disconnected and the motor could go separate but obviously not at the minute never mind so I'll take the screw out the very front screw from there is a tiny tiny little screw so i want to make sure to remember where these all come from because it's important that they go back in the right order there's the next one definitely longer we have got metal bushings as well now this surprise then the late I'm sure it said it was a JG Cybergon, and this seems to be a SEMA gearbox. So 
So those screws are out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a small flat head and I'm going to push it into the back while separating the gearbox. And what I'm going to do is hopefully as the gap clears, I'm going to push it into the spring guide and secure it down so that the gearbox doesn't just explode. Now, wow, that's a lovely caking of green grease we've got in there. So there's my spring. Get that out of the way for now. There is our piston assembly. Uh, no compression of which to speak. How lovely. Oh no, a little bit right at the end. Oh no, oh no. I stand corrected. No, I stand corrected. There is compression in there. Fairly standard looking gear set. Uh, the grease is obviously daubed all over and some effort at shimming it as well. So when you are assembling these, if you have got a non-linear spring, you'll see that there's a tighter coil in the middle uh, and then you've got a uh, tighter coil at the end. That is the end that needs to go on the spring guide. Um, so not the most amazing, best quality internally in there, but it's also not as horrific as it uh, could have been. So we'll get this assembled and put back together and get grease everywhere. And in fact, I'll see what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna secure that back down and I'm just gonna turn this gear. So I'm just holding down the anti-reversal latch and the, um, the gear set there, just so they don't spring out. At the minute, they're quite securely held in. I'm sure they're gonna ping out at some point. I'm gonna drop that little spring. So this spring here goes on a little peg here. And I'm just gonna stretch that back. And what I did was, I basically just turned the gear set around. As soon as I locate that. go log that okay on that log and then i've corrected the piston there so all i've done is is i've just turned the gear set around so that these teeth are away from the um tapping plate this white tapping plate here that is responsible for pulling the air nozzle back which obviously releases the bb into the hot unit pushes the bb forward and then the piston smacks forward compresses the air down the piston down the cylinder out of the cylinder head and down the barrel and your bb comes out the end um, so I've just turned it around. So the anti-reversal latch then, the spring is there. Um, I don't want to mess with it too much because it is actually playing quite nice with me at the minute. Now that is several shims on there. So they are making a good effort at shimming. Uh, that's on the right way. So I'm going to slide that in there. In fact, first, before I do, I'm just going to reposition those nicely so they should go in easier. I'm going to reposition that now this is the tricky hard bit oh see that's moving stuff already right that's locked in place so i'm just going to keep my finger on there and hope to god that this doesn't explode right so i'm going to drop that down the trigger is not the issue at the minute what is that and the issues begin so the trigger block here look has jumped up and out of its positioning so i just need to push that in there we go right hopefully hopefully this is not famous last words here we go so trigger goes in okay spring goes in Spring locks in, top comes on, here we go. Oh, oh, no way, no way. No way is it that easy. It is that easy, wow. Okay, I made that look easy. That is never happening to me usually. So that's back together. So I should get a nice clean seal all the way around. There shouldn't be any gaps or rocking or anything. So I'm all good with that. So let's drop these screws back in and get this uh, gearbox reassembled. 
I would have thought, based on what I've seen in there, if anything was going to break first, it would be the piston, I would have thought. So if you are going to buy one of these, it might be worth picking up a piston first or ordering a piston with it, extra piston, just in case. And remember that the motor screws go that way around. The slightly longer one in this case is at the back. This ever slightly shorter, like one and a half mils or something, is at the front. Make sure these wires stay, I'll show you, in the little track at the back of this motor cage there. Stops them getting pinched and crushed when they go in the pistol grip. So slide that up in there. Perfect mundo. Next thing I'm gonna do is remember this time to bring this bit in to cover that over. There we go. Should sit nice and square and flush on each side. Next thing is I'm gonna push this back on. Tap it down, and then I always use the flat end of a screwdriver just to take it the last little bit, or not in this case. There we go, that was uh, quite stiff and firm to get on there. So that is that done. Next bit, we're gonna bring the select, pack the selector system in, so I'm gonna put that in there and that should just drop all the way through. Now those teeth, exactly like that, should marry up perfectly. There shouldn't be any sort of misalignment there. This gear, as you can see, it's only got a half sort of hole in there. The two together sit nicely and then the screw drops in. And then, oops. tighten that down. There we go, make sure it's nice and tight. I've run those back up there. It's important that they stay in there so they don't get crushed when they're in the pistol grip. And then as you can see, the wire naturally comes up the back here, around on top, like that. So we can now bring in that. So again, these teeth should all marry up like that. And if you do reassemble it and you find that there's something not quite right with your selector, that it's not sitting in the right position, then it's likely a hood is that, that those teeth are not aligned correctly. And then you just need sorting. So that's in the safe position. So I'm happy with that. So at this point then, we're gonna bring back in the lower. I'm gonna keep my finger on that because I don't want that to drop out. And I'm just going to drop that down in through there. It was a little bit stiff when we got it out. And just position that and this hole here. Ow. Nipping my own fingers. There is like a cutout just in the receiver there where the wires can sit. And if it's if it's taking any force to get the receipt, the gearbox in, then it's because the wires are getting crushed in there and they're not in the right place. And I can see there, look that they are moving quite happily in and out of that gap there. Then it's lined up. What I'm gonna do first before I put the uh, selector on is I'm gonna put the pistol grip on just to secure it into the right position. So the pistol grip goes on. All done. So next I'm gonna bring this little cam. So I'm looking for the notch on top to sit with that notch in there, exactly like that. We're going to drop the little brass tube in there. We're going to drop, uh, that goes over the top actually. We're going to drop the selector onto there. As you can see, it matches up. There's sort of clear shapes that matches up together. This went on top here. Then the screw goes in. Screw that in. Make sure the selector's in place. 
and then it should be on safe at the top. Let's put on that little cover then, just clicks in. You can see there's two little holes there for the two little parts of the clip. So I'm just gonna clip that in there. Done, nice and easy. Lift the wiring just out of the way a little bit because we're about to bring in the front. So before we can do that, we're gonna screw these screws back in the barrel. Uh, I do apologize if you can see, or if you have seen snippets of my t-shirt, yes, that is a Christmas t-shirt. This was filmed after Christmas jumper day at work. So I do apologize. Well, I don't really, because I like Christmas jumpers. That's secured in. What we're going to do now is put those little washers back in. They will, should drop in and sit flush with the body. They shouldn't be sort of sticking out in any way. If they're sticking out, they're in wrong. I'm just going to cover those over. I'll flip it over. In fact, I'm going to hold it up. There we go. Flip that over. One. There we go. Right, I'm going to stand that up right. That is the little spring that I was talking about earlier that helps the uh, charging handle move about and that's your hop adjuster there. So that is actually like stuck in there, wedged in there. So I'm going to stand that up so those uh, washers can't come out. And we're just going <clears> to <throat> angle the body up slightly and then forward and in and it will slide. There we go. It will slide eventually. There we go, into place like that. And sit nicely and securely. So if I flip that over now, I can see that I've got the four holes ready to screw back into. These thankfully are um, magnetic. So those are all in. Next thing I'm going to do is tuck the wires under there, get the fuse holder in there, exactly where we want it. I'm just going to drop that down. And I'm going to bring this back in, making sure not to nip anything and not to catch the little handle here on the hop arm um, should slide in in this gap here. Um, and then when you pull that back, that's where you expose it to see it. So you might need to just line that up to there first. And then lift it over. Might take a little bit of fiddling. There we go. And then make sure it pushes in and forward. And it should go down like that. So it should sit, as you can see there, flush with the receiver. And you should be able to easily screw that little tiny screw back in at the back there. So I'm just going to do that now. It should just go straight back into the original hole, which it did, which was a good one. I'm going to put that down. I'm going to bring the button back in, push it back. I'm going to slide that forward, which is spring loaded and sit it in there. And I should have a nice springy button now, which I've got. Charging handle works. The hop is all the way turned off at the minute. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in our stock and we're going to mount that back on. Flip it over. There we go. And then Bring in the cover, it sits under there, click it in. 
and we are ready to go. So, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you found that useful to help you maintain yours. If you do have one of these, uh, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe because that will help the channel to grow um, and be seen by the YouTube algorithms. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye.